Hi, I'm John Velasquez, and you're watching OTV Television Network. everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've had a very busy weekend just completed. We are going to start down in Maryland with a big day of racing at Pimlico. We're going to kick things off at Pimlico with the running of the Laurel Futurity, a grade three and historic event for the juveniles. Let's head down to Maryland and the running of the Laurel Futurity. Well, they're off. Malibu Moonshine last away. It loses Thunder, no problem sprinting out of there to open up a length and a quarter. And now Funk is guided to the outside of that and Defer got the mouth wide, wide open into the first turn. Defer's trying to settle down there into that first turn. Got a little bit ranked now and appears settled just two lengths off the leader. They're going a good pace early on. Second to last is Malibu Moonshine and Woody's Apache is that trailer. On to the six and a half for a long mark, Stuart Elliott making the pace on Elusive Thunder. Funk is comfortable enough to track along there in the second spot. A length and a half more, and Defer is third. And Defer has seemed to have settled into a steady beat there. Maybe got it just a bit off the inside by Jerry Bailey at the five and a half for a long mark. And it's another three back to Woody's Apache, racing second to last position, and Malibu Moonshine is a trailer. Five A's to go in Elusive Thunder, three quarters of a length. Funk is tracking in a good spot in the second position. A length and a half in Defer is holding down third. Well clear now the other horses in Woody's Apache and Malibu Moonshine, second to last and last. Into the far turn and Elusive Thunder quickens up but Funk goes right on with him. Defer is still comfortable enough to win here a length and three quarters from the front followed by Woody's Apache and Malibu Moonshine. Three eighths of a mile left to go and Funk is coming on the outside to put the pressure on Elusive Thunder. Elusive Thunder still holds that lead though. Right behind them is Defer in a pouncing spot from third and Defer appears to have run but Funk has the jump at the top of the lane. Funk and now Defer is set down toward the middle of the track. Elusive Thunder battles on down toward the They've got a furlong to go. Funk and Defer and Defer grabs the lead. It's Defer in front of half length. Funk is an all out second. Defer and Jerry Bailey gliding home. And it's Defer. Funk's giving it a good battle, but it's going to be Defer to win the Laurel Futurity. By some two on the line, Funk was second for third, tight between Woody's Apache and Elusive Thunder. Defer heading in from New York off of a second place finish last time out in the Nashua to Rockport Harbor. Now getting his own first graded stakes victory here by two lengths over a game funk who did offer pretty good resistance late in the stretch until tiring. He did tire in the final uh, 16th or so. Woody's Apache picking up the third spot. The winner, Defer, is a bay two year old son of Danzig from Hidden Reserve by Mr. Prospector. Bred in Kentucky by Ogden Mills Phipps, owned by Mr. Phipps and trained by Suge McGahey. Ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Defer covers the mile in his 16th in the 81st running of the Laurel Futurity in 145 and 2. We're going to head right back to Maryland now in the running of the Salima for two year old Phillies, also $100,000. Once again, a mile in his 16th. Let's head back down to Maryland, the running of the Salima. They're off. Hanalei Bay was away alertly, and here is Roar and Take a Check. Now Take a Check, and to be taken back in between horses. In the meantime, Frost Princess is moving forward, and Jill Robinell is about three deep as they push onto that first turn. Around the turn, and Hear Us Roar down to the inside. Appears relaxed in the early stages of the race, leads it by a length. Frost Princess racing second, and Take a Check is taken back into the third spot to rate. Followed by Hanalei Bay, who's racing now one off the inside. Jill Robinell is fifth, while three wide on toward the six for long mark. Cape Cod about six lengths off the leader up ahead and got a rush has one beaten and that is Jazzy JJ at the back of the pack nine lengths will cover them and a fairly easy pace on the stretch out here for hear us roar and the riders got the foot in the dashboard there hear us roar leads it by a length and a half and an easy length and a half here for hear us roar it takes them to the four and a half for a long mark frost princess racing second take a check is still comfortable third Hanalei Bay fourth Jill Robinell continues three wide Cape Cosmos just about five lengths off the lead asks for a bit of run and behind 
behind horses. Followed second to last by Gotta Rush, who's racing down inside and trailing the field is Jadji JJ. Three eighths of a mile left to go. Hear us roar. Frost Princess up on the outside. Take a check is third. Hannah Lay B fourth. Jill Robinell is fifth on the far outside. Cape Cosmo is asked to kick it in there in the orange colors, some five to six lengths off the leader, who's still Hear Us Roar at the top of the lane. Hear Us Roar has more. Hear Us Roar into the stretch. Opens a little bit here, a length and a half. Now set down. Take a check who's coming after her and Ernest. Jill Robinell on the far outside. Hear Us Roar and take a check. Take a check and Hear Us Roar in there. Nose and nose for a stretch battle here in the final furlong at Pimlico. Take a check. Hear Us Roar pulling out all stops. Hear Us Roar comes roaring back on the inside. Take a check. She's got more on the outside. Hear Us Roar. Take a check. Nothing between them. Hear Us Roar. Hear Us Roar wins it by half ahead. Take a check second. Got a rush was third and Joel Robinell. Hear Us Roar runs her record to three for three under Stu Elliott, who picked up the mount uh, very late uh, in the day, or actually after an accident, forced her originally scheduled rider off. And uh, Stu Elliott getting on this filly for the first time, riding her to her third consecutive lifetime victory. Take a check, finishing in the second spot after pressing the pace throughout. Got a rush, rallies from well back into the third spot. The winner, Hearus Roar, is a two-year-old bay daughter of Lionhearted from Grand Slalom by Broadbrush. Bred in Maryland by Rosalie Davison, owned by the breeder and trained by Francis Campitelli. Ridden to victory by Stu Elliott, Hear Us Roar. Covers the mile in the 16th at Pimlico in 146 and 1. Right back to Pimlico now for older Philly and Mare Sprinters in the Stefanita. Six furlongs, $50,000. Let's head back to Maryland, the Stefanita. And they're off. Sensibly chic and tight spin, breaking alertly, joined by Wallop down to the fence, and Bright Gold has come to join the pace in between horses. Four of them sorting out up the backstretch, five eighths to go. Thermal Ablation is next in line. Down to the fence is Regal in bold, followed by Double Scoop, and wide out and last is Bronze A, but not far from the front, only six lengths off the leader, Bright Gold, who's up front now, and Bright Gold is shaken free by a length and a half at the half mile pole. Wallop is in the second, Sensibly chic third, tight spin under early pressure into the far turn, and between horses, Double Scoop is five lengths in the front. Bronze Abe continues an outside journey. Thermal ablation, and last of all is Regal and Bold. They're at the 516s mark. Bright Gold setting a solid pace out there. In second is Wallop. Then it's a length and three quarters back. Sensibly Chic is third. Bronze Abe continues on the far outside and put to a drive. Bronze Abe's got to do a lot better. Bright Gold and Wallop there with upset chance of the outside. Sensibly Chic is set down toward the middle of the track. And Sensibly Chic is coming on the outside. And here comes Thermal Ablation with a late bit as well. Any one of three or four can win it. Sensibly Chic. Wallop down to the inside. Keeps battling on Wallop. Sensibly Chic. Ramon Dominguez and Sensibly Chic going to get there. Sensibly Chic to win three quarters of a length. Wallop second. Thermal Ablation third. Bright gold fourth. Sensibly chic and New York bred picking up the victory here and a nice effort. This is a uh, filly who's been running against some pretty good company in New York here picking up a length victory over Wallop. Thermal ablation rallying from well back off the pace in a two wide late move to finish third. Disappointing in the field was Bronze Abe. She got off to a little bit of a poor start. She was a little rank in the early going and caught wide as the choice in here finishing seventh in the field of eight. The winner, Sensibly Chic, is a chestnut four-year-old daughter of distorted humor from Regina's Honor by Hero's Honor. She was bred in New York by McMahon Thoroughbreds and Windstar Farm Limited, owned by Lois Nervit and trained by Tim Tollett Jr. Ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez, New York bred Sensibly Chic, covers the six furlongs of the Stefanita and won 10 and 2. Next up, older horses in the Charles Hadry Stakes, $100,000 mile and a 16th for the older set. Let's head back down to Maryland and the running of the Hadry. They're off. Lusty Latin bobbles slightly at the start. Torch the Halls in Deer Run. I just start out of the inside showing early speed. Here's Lusty Latin in fourth and Bowman's Band. Caught about three, four deep into that first turn. Irish Colony in customary uh, spot toward the back of the pack. Some five or six lengths off the lead. Actually, Irish Colony a little bit closer than usual down to the rail. Second to last is last intention. And Wagadugu's taken hold of in last position as Torch the Halls goes on with it now. The six and a half furlongs to run. Torch the Halls making the pace in the Charles H. Hadry stakes by about a length and three quarters. Guide Star gets a little 
little nudge to keep up their second, and Deer Run is in the third spot. Irish Colony up close to the pace. Bowman's Band in between horses, just about three lengths from the front. Lusty Latin is the Gray Park three deep, and Wagadugu in last intention now trailing the field. Only six lengths covers them from first to last as the pace is slowed up just a little bit here with just about four furlongs to go. Torch the Halls in Prado nursing along on the front end. Guy Star and Jerry Bailey keeping close company. Deer Run third, Irish Colony fourth. Here's Bowman's Band in fifth and five lengths to close in at three-eighths of a mile left to go. So it's Torch the Halls and Guy Star and Deer Run and Irish Colony right behind them in fourth. Bowman's Band's called on for run there from the fifth spot of the 516th pole. Last intention of Wagadu. Nothing from uh, Lusty Latin there at the top of the stretch now. And Guy Star confronts Torch the Hall to get a narrow lead as they turn for home. Irish Colony steered off the fence to try to storm home on the far outside. Irish Colony's in front. Irish Colony, Guy Star second. Bowman's Band's right there and tip to the outside of Irish Colony. Bowman's Band but a hurry. Irish Colony's got the lead. Irish Colony with a 16th of a mile left to go. Irish Colony and the Maryland Bread will do it here in the Charles H. Hadry Stakes from Bowman's Band second. Third will be last intention. Torch the Halls is fourth. Irish Colony and Steve, Steve Hamilton picking up a length and a half victory as the 13 to 1 outsider in this field. This is a horse that had won a fairly competitive race two weeks ago right here at this racetrack. A horse for the course overlooked as he was taking on a couple of graded stakes type competitors in Guy Gistar and Bowman's Band. Uh, but he got the last, uh, the last best move here, rated close inside of horses, made a three wide bid to a length and a half victory over Bowman's Band, who was never far back, made a five wide move and just got up for second over last intention. Disappointing was Guy Gistar who did uh, have a little bit of trouble early. He was pulled out from an inside spot to get a little bit clearer running room but never really got into the hunt from there. The winner, Irish Colony, is a bay-gelded four-year-old son of Larupin from Neaton Pleasant by Pleasant Colony. He was bred in Maryland by the Rye Hill Farm. He's owned by the breeder and trained by Ron Cartwright. Ridden to victory by Steve Hamilton, Irish Colony covers the mile in a 16th at Pimlico in 143 and 1. Next up, three-year-old fillies in graded stakes company. We are going to take a look at the Ann Arundel stakes for the three-year-old fillies, $100,000 the purse. Let's head back to Maryland, the running of the Ann Arundel. And they're off. Clean start and Summer Rainbow going out to the lead. Essence has got early speed inside gate. Jazz Legend on the far outside and Silmaril is up close in between horses. Followed to the inside by Rare Gift. Here comes Blind Canyon from the outside gate trying to get position about three to four deep into that first turn. Touch now has now settled some six lengths from the front. And at the fence down there we have Pour It On. In between horses is Family Business. He Loves Me is allowed to settle into a steady beat. Second to last position. Some seven to eight lengths off the leader and Nagam 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 is the trailer. Essence leading the way at a comfortable pace by about a length. Summer Rainbow is a restrained second. The inside rear gift biding time in third. Between horses, long shot Jazz Legend is next in fourth. Another long shot Blind Canyon racing three or four deep. Silmaril is up close to the pace in the green. Three lengths off the lead. Pour it on is to the inside. Family business in between horses. Touch now is coming under a ride. He loves me just even pace at this point. Just gliding along nicely. Seven to eight lengths off a moderate pace up ahead. And Nagam, Nagam, Nagam trails the field with four furlongs to go. Half mile left out. And it's Essence still controlling it. Essence three quarters of a length. Summer Rainbow in the second spot. The inside rare gift and jazz legend is right alongside. Sil Marill is next in line. Now Blind Canyon comes under a ride. Pour it on's running a big one down to the fence, just five or six lengths off the lead. And Pour it on appears to have some run left in behind horses. Family business. Let's see. He loves me. Still some eight lengths off the lead, and she's going to be taking four or five wide for her run into the stretch. Essence, the pace controller, leads them into the stretch. Sil Marill comes from second. And rear gift is next. He loves me out of the center of the track. Between horses, Summer Rainbow continues to battle on and pour it on in family business. A furlong to go. Essence still there. Essence pace controlled by Johnny Velasquez trying to save it for the final 16th of a mile. Essence holding on. Rare gift and Prado surging. Essence, rare gift hitting the line. Essence. Essence from rare gift. Family business third for Silmaril. 149 and 1 in the Anna Rundle. Essence in a very nice effort here. She picked up her uh, first stakes victory by a neck in a game effort over Rare Gift. She was on the pace every step of the way. Rare Gift never far back, made a strong bid at the top of the stretch, but es Essence was able to withstand that bid in the shadow of the wire. Family business rallied from well back off the pace to finish in the third spot. 
the winner, Essence, was coming off of a win in Keeneland last time out in the mud, making her stakes debut, graded stakes debut, a winning one. Essence is a three-year-old bay daughter of Gulch from Patellan's Legacy by Cherokee Colony, bred in Virginia by Mrs. C. Oliver Islin III, owned by Padua Stable and trained by Todd Pletcher. Ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Essence covers the mile in an eighth at Pimlico in 149 and one. The big race of the day on Saturday at Pimlico, of course, the DeFrancis Dash, a grade one, $300,000, six furlong sprint. A number of horses returning off of the Breeders' Cup sprint. Let's head down to Maryland and the running of the DeFrancis Dash. All in. And they're off. Wildcat Air and Albin Donza firing out along with Mind Size, Long Shot, Philadelphia Jim in the early mix. Gators and Bears and Shake You Down as they sort themselves out. Champ Ali's only about a length and three quarters from the front now. Albin Donza settles three deep and back to true direction. A Wavo glides along some seven lengths off the lead. And last of all is Clock Stopper, who's last and last by about 14 lengths. 22 and three for the opening quarter. Racing into the far turn in the defense's dash. And a speed duel out there. A speed duel developing and it's heavy too. On the inside, Philadelphia Jim with Shake You Down. Wildcatters chasing them on from third. Abandonza next in fourth. And Midas Size is fifth, just four lengths from the front. Followed by Gators and Bears is tipping in between horses on the extreme outside. Champ Ali is next in line. Down to the inside there, trying to move through is a Wavo, and they've got three sixteenths to go. A half, 45, two fifths of a second. And a wide open dash here. And Wildcat Air is trying to go on. Wildcat Air is going on with it. Midas Size finishing fast in the far outside. Gators and Bears clock stopper way out in the middle of the track. Wild Wildcat Air is just there. Midas Eyes trying to nab him on the line. Wildcat Air, Midas Eyes, Wildcat Air, Wildcat Air! Wildcat Air is winning from Midas Size. Clock Stopper was third. Gators and Bears fourth. Philadelphia Jim fifth. Awebo followed in the back of the pack by Alban Donza. Back there, third last position was Champ Ali in true direction. Shake you down last in 109 and two fifths of a second. Oh. Wildcat Air, his first graded stakes win. And this is a horse that's run some pretty good races over the course of his career. He's a lightly raced horse. He's had some serious physical problems, including two broken hind injuries in the hind, actually two broken legs in the same leg behind. This is a horse that has obviously got a lot of talent, hasn't had much opportunity to show it. Here he was showcased with a beautiful effort. He was away sharply. He stayed very close to the early pace, which was competitive, and was right there able to hold off my to size in the late charging clock stopper to pick up his first grade one victory. Wildcat Air is a bay four-year-old son of Forrest Wildcat from Penniless Heiress by Pentelicus. Bred in Kentucky by the New Farm. He is owned by the New Farm which has truly created the uh, stallion sensation Forest Wildcat. They have supported him at, with good, good mares, and they have raced the offspring to considerable success. Ridden to victory by Stu Elliott, Wildcat Air covers the six furlongs of the DeFrancis Dash in 109 and 2. We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to the Midwest for racing action from Kentucky as well as Oklahoma. Please stay tuned. This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. Since 1982, the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope for those in need. Creating opportunities where once there were none, the TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge, taking care of their own. Yesterday's innovative concepts combining the TRF's rescue mission with educational and rehabilitation goals have become today's life-saving success stories and a track record of unsurpassed growth. Safely retired thoroughbreds are now enjoying second careers, bringing responsibility, healing, and purpose to the lives of those who need it most. With your help, we can continue our saving mission ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Churchill Downs, beginning with a two-year-old Philly stake on the turf. Kentucky has done a nice job with developing a program for the two-year-old turf horses. We're going to take a look now at the caressing for two-year-old fillies going a mile and a sixteenth on the grass. Let's head to Kentucky, the running of the caressing. They're off and running. 
It's Jules Best breaking on top, joined quickly by Sweet Talker. Landmark is down at the hedge. Then Diane's debut, Wrangle back in fourth. Dynamis gains on the outside, fifth by three more to Where's Bailey. At the back of the pack, Jill's cap the trailer. Passing the Spires for the first time. Sweet Talker by a neck now, pressed by Diane's debut, who's rushing up the challenge from second. And Landmark down along the inside hedge, cutting the corner from the third spot, followed up by Jules Best in fourth. Dynamis, three wide around the first turn. Cap of seven farther back to Where's Bailey at the back. Jules Cat the trailer. On to the back stretch, they wheel the quarter 24 and two fifth seconds. It's Sweet Talker by a head now. Diane's debut ranging up three wide with Landmark in between the top pair. Two back to Dynamis, racing in fourth. Jules Best is five off from fifth by seven more. To where's Bailey and way back to Jules Cat at the back of the pack. Half and 49 and two. Passing the half mile pole. They stack up across the track here. Landmark in front by a head. To Sweet Talker in second. Diane's debut getting out a bit on that turn now. Dynamis next by two more to Jules Best. Seven farther back to where's Bailey and way back to Jules Cat. Around the far turn they go. It's Landmark to the outside and Sweet Talker at the edge. They're stride for stride. Diane's debut back up into it third. Dynamis gaining but needs a seam from fourth. Whips out on Jules Best. A dozen farther back to Where's Bailey as they turn for home. Landmark and Sweet Talker. Sweet Talker set down for the driver. Responding to the urging of Brees Block and she's opening up here. Sweet Talker quickly by three. Dynamist up in this second. Landmark's under pressure than Diane's debut. And Jules Best in deep stretch. Brees Block on the grass here with Sweet Talker. And Sweet Talker rolling out to a nice win. Sweet Talker will win it by nearly three of the wire. Dynamis second and Diane's debut in Landmark. Sweet Talker and Brees Blanc getting the victory here. Three and a quarter lengths near the front end every step of the way over the favored odds-on choice. Dynamis, Diane's debut, duked it out in the early going and held on fairly well on this yielding surface to finish third. The winner, Sweet Talker, a two-year-old dark bay or brown daughter of Storm and Fever from another vegetarian by Stalwart. She was bred in Kentucky by Brereton Jones, owned by... Elia and Lisa Khan, trained by Ken McPeak and ridden to victory by Brees Blanc. Sweet Talker covers the mile in a 16th on a yielding turf surface in 147 and 2. We're going to head right back down to Kentucky now for the running of the Grade 3 Cardinal for older fillies and mares going nine furlongs on the turf. Let's head back to, back to Kentucky in Saturday's running of the Cardinal. And the gate. Off and running in the Cardinal. May Gator springs out for the early lead. Classic Stamp is flashing good speed at the rail. They're quickly joined by Beret up between horses. Awed down along the inside hedge now. Chaconage is next, and there goes Angela's Love, set out aggressively by Tammy Fox, and Angela's Love will set the pace, passing the stands for the first time. She's clear by two and a half to long shot. May Gator racing in the second spot. Nanny Cam third. Chance Dance is fourth, and Noisette racing fifth. Classic Stamp is saving all the ground down at the hedge now, followed by Beret. And in behind that comes on the bus about seven links off the pace in mid-pack. Beret's down along the inside and it's Fidery and a gap of seven back to Odd at the back of the pack. On to the backside and the Cardinal they wheel. Opening quarter 24 and three-fifths seconds over the yielding turf. Angela's Love three parts of a length in front. Getting pressure from May Gator. Next by two classic stamp tracking perfectly at the rail in third. Nanny Cam's in fourth. Noisette three wide in striking range in fifth. Chaconage is sent through an opening along the inside quickly rushing up under Joe Johnson now. And by that chance, Dance is about nine links off the pacemaker. Then Beret on the bus is next, followed by Finery far outside, about four deep and two back to Odd, who starts to pick it up now from the back of the pack, but there's a dozen off the pacemaker. Round the far turn, Angela's Love at 38 to one, kicks for home by two. May Gator tracking second by three, classic stamp shaken up third. Chaconage follows her into stride now with Chance Dance on the far side. They turn for home, Angela's Love leads it by three. May Gator blew that turn, turning for home, and three farther back, here comes Odd, charging up the inside, Angela's Love, long shot, Tammy Fox all over this one in front by two, May Gator untracked and comes again, and Odd's up the inside still, Angela's Love clinging a short lead, Odd's coming fast and May Gator, Angela's Love, Odd May Gator, Angela's Love still there, Odd May Gator, Odd in the final jump to beat Angela's Love and May Gator in the Cardinal Handicap. Odd picking up a off-the-pace win. In fact, a last-to-first victory here 
top of the stretch, she was still a well-beaten horse, got up by a neck over long shots. May Gator and Angela's Love in a very game effort. Angela's Love held on very well after setting leisurely fractions up front at 38 to 1. Favorite in the field was Classic Stamp, who, according to Pat Day, did not care at all for the very yielding surface. The winner, Odd, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old daughter of Wild Again from Gales Brush by Broad Brush. Bred in Kentucky by the Wilmot Stable, owned by Wilmot Stable and trained by Anthony Reinstedler. Ridden to victory by Brice Blanc. Odd covers the mile and an eighth at Churchill on that yielding surface in 153 and four. Next up, two-year-old males on Saturday in the Grand Canyon Stakes. This is, uh, once again, a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head back down to Kentucky, the running of the Grand Canyon. In the gate. There, off and running. Dixie Slew broke on top. Storm and Eddie out to take the early lead now. Rita Cafe came away racing third. Crown points in fourth and its major gold. Builder's option next by a length to exceptional ride at the back of the pack. Belknap County Trails. Passing the Twin Spires for the first time. Storm and Eddie and Eduardo Perez in front by a length and a half. Not a long shot. Major gold tracking second. Ray de Cafe is racing in third. Dixie's Lou in a little tight racing fourth and steered off the fence now. Builder's option next by a length and a half to Belknap County. Then it's Crown Point. Exceptional ride at the back of the pack. Seven lengths off the pace. They're well bunched. The quarter, 24 seconds flat. On to the back stretch they go. It's Storm and Eddie showing the way a length and a half clear. Ray de Cafe and Pat Dixie up into a clear-cut second. Major Gold's in third now. Builder's option far outside is fourth. Belknap County advancing at the hedge from fifth, and it's Dixie Slough, followed by Crown Point, and at the back of the pack, the trailer is Exceptional Ride. Heading off around the far turn, Storm and Eddie still there at 30 to 1. Three parts of a length in front. Ray to Cafe breathing down that one's neck, and the rail is opened up now for Belknap County, who sent through. Length and half front of the back to Builder's option now. Crown Point shaken up, followed by Dixie Dixie Slew on the inside. Exceptional ride is looping up into the race six or seven wide. And Major Gold at the back of the pack to the top of the lane. Still long shot. Storm and Eddie set down for the drive. A length and a half in front. Ray to Cafe and Pat Day gets busy on that one. Here comes Exceptional Ride charging hard. Exceptional Ride striking the front. Got the jump on Ray to Cafe who starts to hit that one's best drive now in deep stretch. Exceptional Ride goes clear from Ray to Cafe. Exceptional Ride. And Brees Blanc wins wins it by a length and a half to Rated Cafe. Storm and Eddie then crown point. Exceptional ride picking up the victory here. This guy has uh, been very impressive since moved on to the turf. He broke his maiden on the main track, but is now two for three with a stakes win on the turf surface. Rallying from well off the pace after being outrun, he moved about five wide under hand urging from Brees Blanc to pick up a length and a quarter victory over Ray de Cafe. Storm and Eddie, the early pace setter at 30 to 1, holds on very nicely for the third spot. The winner, exceptional ride, is a bay two year old son of Chester House from Adorable Slew by Dixieland Band. Bred in Kentucky by Mr. and Mrs. Robert David Randall and owned by Lisa and Elia Khan. Trained by Ken McPeak and ridden to victory by Brees Blanc. Exceptional ride covers the mile in his 16th. Again on that yielding surface in 146 and 4. Back to the Kentucky turf now one more time for the running of the River City Handicap. A grade 3 for the older set going a distance on the turf. Let's head back down to Kentucky, the River City. In the gate. Off and running in the River City Handicap. Good even start. Warley broke on top, joined by GP Fleet and French Lieutenant came away racing in third. Quest Star is rushing down the center of the course and Quest Star easily sweeping on by to take charge, passing the stands for the first time. Cloudy's night up into second. Warley into the bid racing third. GP Fleet's in fourth by a length and half. The French Lieutenant racing in fifth. I Caramba between horses racing in the sixth spot now as False Promises gains up three wide. And it's a gap of a couple farther back to... Tam's terms is about nine links off the pace. Honor and War gets a spot down at the hedge. Dr. Kashnikow is next, followed by Deputy Strike at the back of the pack. Dumani star the trailer. A dozen links front to back on to the backside. They go the quarter, 24 seconds flat. And it's Quest Star in front by just ahead. Pressed hard now by Warley. The tempo quickens here. Cloudy's night, the long shot tracking off the hedge in third. GP Fleet down on the inside, racing in fourth. False Promises fifth by a couple more, followed by Ike Caramba gaining three 
wide. Otter and War starts to pick his way up into the race now. Then French Lieutenant Tams Terms is next in gaining up on the outside. Followed by French Lieutenant two and a half farther back to Dr. Kashnikov. And Dumani Star continues at the back of the pack. Half and 48. Six furlongs in 113 flat. Around the far turn they go. Worley in front by an Ecta Quest Star Racing. Second Claudie's Knight revs up into third. In behind that GP fleet. I Caramba kicks it into high gear. Otter and War set down for the drive and steered off the fence to rally up under Pat Day. Down to the final furlong. Worley and Johnny McKee in front by an Here comes GP Fleet spinning horses. And GP Fleet is up to take the lead. A 16th out. Cloudy's Night on the outside. GP Fleet just ahead to a stubborn Cloudy's Night. GP Fleet gets there. GP Fleet and Jose Martinez winning the River City by three quarters. Cloudy's Night was a game second than I Caramba and Deputy Strike. GP Fleet victorious on the dirt and allowance company last time out pulls off a bit of a surprise here with a $26 mutual on top by a half a length never far back in the early going under Jose Martinez picking up the nice victory over long shot cloudy night with I Caramba at about five to one continuing to uh, pick up a nibble away but without quite getting that first win in the states that uh, has been much anticipated he's found himself in with some pretty nice horses during the course of his career Worley who uh, did not get to the lead as is his usual running style a little bit disappointing here as the choice finishing seventh in the field of 12. The winner GP Fleet is a four-year-old chestnut gelding a son of Northern Fleet from Come On Bid by Spectacular Bid. Bred in Florida by George Parrish and owned by Richard Bertram and Elaine Klein trained by Steve Flint and ridden to victory by Jose Martinez Jr. GP Fleet covers the mile and an eighth on the yielding surface at Churchill Downs in one minute 51 and one. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Oklahoma. Sunday's running of the Oklahoma Derby, a grade $350,000 for three-year-olds. Let's head to Remington Park now in the running of the Oklahoma Derby. All in. And they're off in the 2004 Oklahoma Derby. All the way in good order, Gamblin going towards the front with Quinton's Gold Rush, Gamblin dropping over and has a half-length advantage as they hit the mirror for the first time, one lap left. Quinton's Gold Rush right there, second, Mr. Jester in third, Brits Jewels at the rail is fourth. Then it's Foreign Justice, Commander Buck to the outside, sixth, Roar Victory and Slew Slayer moving along the rail area, Cryptograph moving up and not towards the back today. Then it's Golden Glen and Wally's Choice. Around the clubhouse turn, the opening quarter in a fair 22 and two. Six furlongs left to run. It's Gamblin on the lead by a half length. Quinton's Gold Rush is second, a gap of a length then to Brits Jewels in third. Mr. Chester is fourth. Foreign Justice is fifth. Then it's Slew Slayer, Commander Buck, Cryptograph, and Pettinger moving up on the outside. Golden Glen has the rail from the back of the pack and is advancing there. Roar of Victory and Wally's Choice bring up the rear. A half mile left, 45 and 4 for the opening half. They approach the far turn. Quinton's Gold Rush will wait no longer and goes to the front. Also going to the lead and battling up front to the outside. That is Brits Jewels. Brits Jewels takes over as they make the turn. Quinton's Gold Rush is second. Here comes Golden Glen advancing steadily into third and now into second. Foreign Justice is resilient. And on the outside, Cryptograph, very wide, but charging towards the lead. Six furlongs in a minute, 10 and four. They're at the top of the lane, the Oklahoma Derby, and Cryptograph has grabbed the lead. Wide around the turn, Cryptograph has it now as they reach the furlong pole. On the outside, here comes Wally's Choice, the big long shot making a bid. Golden Glen down at the rail. Golden Glen, Wally's Choice. Wally's Choice takes over as they approach the line. Wally's Choice, a huge upset in the Oklahoma Derby. Wally's Choice picking up the victory, a long shot win here at almost 34 to 1 by a length from well back off the pace. Coming in from his native Minnesota where he's been running very competitively, trying graded stakes company for the first time. Golden Glen rallies nicely into the second spot. Favored Cryptograph also made a huge rallying move off of a stalking position to finish in the third spot. The winner, Wally's Choice, is a Bay Gelding, son of Quick Cut from L'Etoile Jolie by Commemorate. He was bred in Minnesota by Curtis A. Sampson, owned by Joyce and Wally McNeil Curt and Curtis Sampson, trained by Michael Beeler and ridden to victory by Luis Quinones. Wally's Choice covers the mile and an eighth at Remington Park in 1 minute 50 and 1. 
We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to Hollywood Park for a pair of juvenile steaks and returning home to the Big A. Please stay tuned. Voice recognition betting is now available with Capital Off-Track Betting. Let's take a look at how it works. First bet, please. At Philadelphia Park, race three, five dollars to win and place on the two. The bet is Philadelphia Park, race three, five dollars to win place on two. Bet cost ten dollars. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Your wager has been confirmed. Your next bet, please. Thank you. That'll be all. All bets, $10. Your account balance is $0. Thank you. Goodbye. To try the new voice recognition system, call 518-344-5700 or 1-800-233-0375. Betting from your phone has never been so easy. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with a pair of stakes races from Hollywood Park for the two-year-olds, beginning with the Hollywood Preview. This is a grade $300,000 seven furlongs. Let's head to Hollywood Park and the running of the Hollywood Preview. They're off. Beat the chalk and twice unbridled, seize the day, and to the outside bushwhacker, all show speed. Megabyte and Declan's Moon are mid-pack. Southern Africa moves through at the rail, and the trailer is power wave. Bushwhacker, fastest up the back stretch. He'll cross and clear and take charge. It is Bushwhacker now out sprinting, seize the day early. Declan's move has tugged up into third, and he's two and a half lengths off the lead in the three path and in the clear. Megabyte and beat the chalk. Both have four and a half to come as Bushwhacker leads past the half mile marker. Then comes Southern Africa and twice unbridled. They're seven from the front and at the back of the pack it's power wave as they go into the far turn. Bushwhacker continues to lead. The two favorites are nipping at his heels. Sees the day is second. He's a neck in front of Declan's Moon who's three deep in third. Those two in striking position and there goes Declan's Moon up into second. Declan's Moon is after Bushwhacker at the top of the stretch in the 23rd Hollywood preview stakes and Declan's Moon comes roaring off the top of the turn. He engages Bushwhacker. These two are now two in front of Seize the Day. Three back to beat the chalk in Megabyte. Bushwhacker's tough to get by. Declan's Moon now is beginning to take charge, though, and he's a length and a half in front. Bushwhacker is second. Seize the Day is third. Southern Africa fourth, and Declan's Moon now in charge and geared down. Declan's Moon, yes. Declan's Moon one by two. Could have been a lot more than that. On to the Hollywood Futurity. Very close for second between Bushwhacker and Seize the Day. Southern Africa was fourth. Declan's Moon picking up a very impressive victory, running his record to three for three. Off an impressive victory earlier this season over Roman Ruler that kept him out of the Breeders' Cup. Aimed him for this spot as a prep race for the Hollywood Futurity later on in the season. And here got a handy two-length victory under, under Victor Espinoza over Bushwhacker, the early pace setter. Sees the day who sat in a stalking position in the early going. Did run well to finish third off an impressive maiden victory last time out. The winner, Declan's Moon, a dark bay or brown gelded son of Malibu Moon from VV Star by Norquester, was bred in Maryland by Bryce Ridgely, owned by JMS Stable and trained by Ron Ellis. Ridden to victory by Victor Espinoza, Declan's Moon covers the seven furlongs at Hollywood in 121 and 3. We're going to continue now with two-year-old stakes from Hollywood with the moccasin for two-year-old fillies. The distance seven furlongs. Let's head back to Sunday's running of the moccasin. They're off. No Bull Baby, Hello Lucky, and Swift Wings all show speed. She's a jewel. Right up in the firing line as well. Northern Mischief comes away fifth, and she's less than two from the front. Short route is at the rail, and the early trailer is Island Escape. Hello Lucky with two pressing up the back stretch. She's a jewel is three deep. Swift Wings is between horses. Hello Lucky's ahead in front. No Bull Baby and Northern Mischief track the front runners two and a half lengths off the lead. Short route is in the white. Sixth and three and a half from the front. Six lengths last to Island 
Island Escape as they pass the half mile pole. In the 18th, Moccasin Stakes, Hello Lucky. She's a jewel on the attack. Swift wings between horses. No bull babies got run, but had to check leaving the back stretch. She's passed by Short Route, who pulls her way up into fourth. Just outside of Short Route is Northern Mischief, and no bull baby has absolutely nowhere to go. Northern Mischief does, though, because she's four wide and in the clear. Hello Lucky has backed out of it. That lands She's a Jewel just in front. Northern Mischief alongside in second. No Bull Baby is finally out. And now she's in gear. Short Route's at the rail and they run to the top of the stretch. Short Route. No Bull Baby. Northern Mischief and She's a Jewel and Short Route's just in front but No Bull Baby is on the attack. Here comes No Bull Baby to claim the lead. Short Route is back to second. Northern Mischief and She's a Jewel. No Bull Baby. Let there be no doubt who's best. No Bull Baby. No Bull Baby wins the moccasin over short route. She's a jewel third, Northern Mischief fourth. No Bull Baby and Tyler Bay is picking up a half a length victory as the two to one choice over Short Root, who did rally from nicely off the pace after getting off a little bit slowly. She's a jewel. Set the uh, was involved in the early pace, dueling it out uh, early on with Hello Lucky, the recent winner of the Enochia, having to uh, that one settling. She's a jewel settling for third. Hello Lucky, a little bit disappointing coming out of the speed duel and finishing sixth in the field of seven. The winner, No Bull Baby, was second in the Enochia stakes last time out. Here improves just a little bit as she stretched an extra furlong. No Bull Baby is a two-year-old daughter of Indian Charlie from Slumgullion by, by Conquistador Cielo. Bred in Kentucky by Hal Earnhardt and owned by Patty and Hal Earnhardt, trained by Bob Baffert, and ridden to victory by Tyler Bays. No Bull Baby covers the seven furlongs of the moccasin in 123 flat. We're going to head back to New York now for stakes racing action over the weekend, beginning with the restricted, safely kept stakes. Three-year-old fillies going six furlongs on the main track. Let's head back to Saturday at Aqueduct, the running of the safely kept. And they're off. Gilded Gold was off awkwardly and trails the field. Ambition Unbridled is the early leader. Then she laughs is racing in second. Storm Minstrel and Mayfield are heads apart, third and fourth. Then it's a length and a half to Adriatic Sea. Annika Lass is in between horses. Humor Me Molly is on the outside. Checking there was Adriatic Sea as they move around the turn, the quarter in 22 and two. Ambition Unbridled leads three quarters of a length. Then she laughs, is running in second. Mayfield on the outside in third. Storm Minstrel is fourth. Now Gilded Gold has moved up to fifth. Then it's Humor Me Molly, followed by Annika Lass, Adriatic Sea, and Dream a Dream for Me is ninth and last. The half mile in 46 seconds as they come into the stretch. Then she laughs, in between horses, Storm Minstrel down on the inside, Ambition Unbridled. Mayfield is fourth. Sixteenth to the finish now. And it's Storm Minstrel, and then she laughs. Storm Minstrel, then she laughs. Their heads apart as they come down for the line. Then she laughs. Storm Minstrel, photo finish. Storm Minstrel, or then she laughs. Dream a dream for me, close to get third. Storm Minstrel picking up the victory. A nice effort here, an exciting stretch run, one of a number of very good stretch runs at the Big A in the last few days. Over Then She Laughs, a very game rival. Dream a Dream for Me rallies from far back off the pace to finish two lengths behind the winning winner and the second place filly. The winner, Storm Minstrel, is a three year old gray or roan daughter of Stormcat from Colonial Minstrel by Pleasant Colony. Bred in Virginia by Edward P. Evans, owned by Mr. Evans and trained by Mark Hennig, ridden to victory by Pablo Fergoso. Storm Minstrel covers, covers the six furlongs at the Big A in 111 flat. The final turf stakes of the season in New York is the Red Smith. Every year it is anticipated as uh, a race that hopefully will remain on the turf. It's a grade two for the older horses running a mile and three eighths. Let's head down to the Big A in the running of the Red Smith. And they're off. Certifiably Crazy is going out for the early lead. Navasink River in second, then Dreadnought in third, Rochester on the inside in fourth. Irish Colonial is fifth. Then comes second performance and Quiet Ruler. They are right together. Dr. Brendler is in eighth. A Lost is ninth and Evening Attire. The early trailer in tenth. 
as they move around the far turn for the first time. Certifiably Crazy leads by three quarters of a length. Navasink River is running in second. Irish Colonial now up to third. The first quarter over the good turf in 26 seconds. As they come by the stands, it's certifiably crazy in front by two lengths. Navasink River is in second. Irish Colonial in third. Rochester saving ground at the rail. Then it's Dreadnought in fifth. Quiet Ruler on the outside in sixth. Second performance at the rail. Dr. Brendler is in between horses. Gap of three lengths to the two trailers, a lost and evening attire. The half was run in 51 and four. Certifiably Crazy continues to lead here with Navasink River pressing the pace in second. It's a length and a half to Irish Colonial who's had a good trip running in third. Rochester down on the inside fourth. Then it's Dreadnought in fifth, followed by second performance, Quiet Ruler, then Dr. Brendler, and at the back of the pack, the two grays, evening attire, and a lost. Three quarters went in one, 17 and four. Certifiably crazy, and Navasink River, certifiably crazy, holding on to the lead by a neck. Navasink River on the outside in second. Irish Colonial is third. Rochester on the inside in fourth. Then second performance and Dreadnought, followed by Dr. Brendler, a lost and evening attire, then quiet ruler, and they turn for home in the Red Smith handicap. There goes Dreadnought. Dreadnought sweeps to the lead here. Certifiably crazy on the inside. Certifiably crazy right there with Dreadnought. Dr. Brendler moving into third. 16th to the finish. Dreadnought on the outside. Certifiably crazy on the inside. It's a photo finish. Look like Dreadnought got it, but it'll be a photo with certifiably crazy. A lost. Got up for third. Dreadnought picking up an impressive victory in his first stakes try. This guy dead game through the lane over Certifiably Crazy, another New York bred who ran very well here in open company, finishing second as seems to be his want. A lost rallying from well back off the pace to finish third and neck in front of Irish Colonial. The winner, Dreadnought, who had spent a little bit of time going over jumps. He had moved through allowance conditions rather rapidly, however. Connections thought he was a good horse stretching out to a distance, and obviously he rewarded them. He is a bay four-year-old son of Lock We Met from Dream Wings of Dreams by Sovereign Dancer. Bred in Kentucky by David Pennington, owned by Trillium Stable. The name sounds familiar. They are the connections of John's Call. Trained by the trainer of John's Call, Tommy Voss, and ridden to victory by Jean-Luc Samin. Dreadnought covers the mile in three ace on the turf course, labeled good in two minutes, 18 and four. Back to the Aqueduct main track for the final stake of the week, the Valley Stream, a grade three for two-year-old fillies going six. Let's head back to New York in the running of the Valley Stream. And they're off. More moonlight on the outside. Megascape at the rail. Megascape has the early lead. Galactic Cat and more moonlight. Heads apart second and third. The favorite Alfonsina is fourth in the early going. And Winsome is the trailer in fifth as they move up the back stretch with Megascape leading by a length. Galactic Cat is second. And on the outside, more moonlight right there in third. Gap of two to Alfonsina. Winsome is the trailer, the first quarter in 22 seconds as they race around the far turn. Megascape leads by a length. More Moonlight is second. Galactic Cat is being pulled up. Galactic Cat being eased. Megascape is the leader. More Moonlight in second. Alfonsina on the outside in third. Then Winsome in fourth, the half in 45 and one. Megascape has the lead in front by two lengths. Alfonsina on the outside of More Moonlight. But Megascape leads now by three lengths. Megascape in front at the 16th pole, and she is going to score wire to wire here. The battle will be for second. Megascape by three lengths at the end. Alfonsina did get second. More Moonlight was third. Megascape getting the victory here for Steve Asmussen's connections. They have broken the record for the number of victories in a season, and Steve Asmussen's barn continues to do an exceptional job. Megascape coming in off a 17-length loss last time out as the odds on or even money choice in the Maid of the Mist at a mile against New York Breads here. Drops back to six furlongs, gets to the lead, and never looks back, winning at almost five to one over the heavily favored Alfonsina with more moonlight. Stalking trip to finish in the third spot.
The winner, Megascape, a dark bay or brown two-year-old daughter of Cape Canaveral from Bigger Half by Megaturn was bred right here in New York by Says Who Thoroughbreds. Owned by Robert L. Beck and trained by Steve Asmussen, ridden to victory by John Velasquez, Megascape covers the six furlongs at, of the Valley Stream at Aqueduct in 110 and 1. That's going to wrap it up for us here at, the, uh, at Horses and Courses for this week. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope to see you all back here next time. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.